This is my second time recording. I, I, I technically already filmed it, but I forgot to hit record on the camera. I'm Hog, this is the dice. I didn't actually get to go up to the Hellfire Club yet. It's just, I've been busy. I've been really busy. But I am going to do the runner up on the most recent poll. So we're going to be talking about Petticoat Loose. If you like shape shifting, morally ambiguous, quasi feminist, undead lake monster witches, then no. No, no, look. I doubt there's a single person watching this video who didn't get really excited hearing the phrase shape-shifting, morally ambiguous, quasi-feminist, undead lake monster witch. In fact, I'm reasonably certain that describes half the people watching this video. A fact that delights me, by the way. I want you to picture Gwendolyn Christie. The, the, the tall goddess who plays Brienne of Tarth on Game of Thrones. Make her a farmer's daughter in Tipperary. She's described as being six foot tall with proportions to match and doing a man's farm's work without a second thought. Subtle notes of sexism in my description. She was an incredible and energetic dancer, spinning and whirling across the dance floor with her skirts twirling around her. Her name was Mary Hannigan. It was Mary's dancing that ended up earning her the nickname Petticoat Loose. One night at a party, Mary had been drinking particularly heavily, another thing she was well known for. And she started dancing with a special vigor and enthusiasm. When her skirt caught on a nail in the wall, she kept twirling regardless and her skirt ripped off clear, leaving her petticoat flapping loose. Now Mary, as it happens, wasn't very fond of the nickname Petticoat Loose. And well, she didn't take mockery lightly. So anyone caught using the nickname within earshot of her was probably due a clatter. Eventually Mary married. Her husband was a big man and was apparently the only man who could keep up with her on the dance floor. The marriage probably wasn't happy for very long because there was a young student living near to Mary and her husband. And Mary had arranged with this young student to kill her husband so the pair of them could get married instead. Mary's husband was very fond of fishing. So Mary told him one day that there was a load of salmon on the river Culligan. So the three of them went out on a little fishing trip. Mary's lover, the student, took this opportunity to try and drown her husband in the river. But her husband was too quick for him and too big for him. And he, well, he drowned the student. He didn't seem to realize that Mary was involved in the plan to kill him because they stayed together for a few years up until the point where another one of Mary's lovers, this time a traveling hedge school teacher, actually did manage to kill him. There's no reports on whether they got married afterwards or not. Mary might not have actually been in love with either of her lovers. She might have just been using them because she didn't like her husband and wanted him dead. Who knows? Mary was widely rumored to be a witch. It was said that the watered down milk she would sell to people would turn tea blue and make people sick. People also said that she had killed both of her parents. But it wasn't until after Mary died that a lot of the really weird things started happening. One night, a man was driving his cart home when Petticoat Loose leapt onto the back of his cart and demanded that he bring her home. The man said no, and Petticoat Loose thought this was very rude, so she decided to punish him. I have one ton in this hand, she said, and the horse began to slow. I have one ton in this hand, she said. The horse slowed down even more. I have one ton in this leg, she said, and the horse began to falter. I have one ton in the other leg, she said. The horse started stumbling severely. I have one ton in my belly, she said. 
and the horse dropped dead in the road. Petticoat Loose disappeared, nowhere to be seen by the man driving the cart, and he was left there, stranded for the night, with no way home, just waiting for somebody to pass by and help him. Most of the stories about the undead Petticoat Loose after she died involve her randomly accosting travellers on their way home at night. It's a little bit weird. But one night, she picks on the wrong person. She attacks a priest on his way home, and he condemns her to emptying out Loch Bay with a thimble. She is supposedly still there to this day, trying to empty the lake. Occasionally, she'll creep upon people who come to the lake shore and try to drown them. Sometimes in her human form, but sometimes as some kind of Kelpie-esque half-horse creature. This is one of those stories where underlying notes of sexism are quite obvious. Mary Hannigan was an unusually tall and physically strong woman who was clearly very forthright, who clearly didn't take bullshit from people and who could stand up for herself. So obviously she was a witch, an evil witch, because that's all that that can mean. I feel like the story of Petticoat Loose is something that could be, by the right person, spun into something quite positive in a retelling. I'd, li I'd really like to see that. If one of you, if one of you would like to do that, tell that story, please show it to me. Please let me see. I, I will share it around and let other people see. I, I, I just want to see that. I, w I would love to see that. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten the 1000 subscriber giveaway. I'll be doing the draw in the very next video, which I should be filming in the next couple of days, if not tomorrow. I hope you enjoyed this video on Petticoat Loose. I should be filming the B-roll for the Hellfire Club video in the next week or so, and I'll be putting that up very soon. I want to thank everyone for watching and, and for everyone for subscribing and, and liking and doing all the YouTube stuff and to my patrons as well. Very much to my patrons, especially Neil McConvera, Casper Maynard, Amantis, and all those other names you see scrolling across the screen there. Just the support really, really helps. Patreon support. Kofi support, but also likes and shares, subscriptions, they all really help. I have ads now on YouTube. YouTube has deemed me worthy of advertising. So everything you do interacting with these videos helps me. And just remember, your applause is the only way to counteract my daily chant of I don't believe in fairies.